Hey guys, welcome to how to make iPhone apps with no programming experience. This is lesson one, tools and materials. And this video is going to serve as a checklist of what you'll need to uh, proceed on this journey of learning iOS development and a little bit of an orientation on all the things that you'll be seeing and using. Now the only thing you really need in order to learn iOS development is a Mac. And that's essential because that's the only way you're going to be able to follow along and to practice. Now the reason you need a Mac is because the program that we use to build apps on and to write our code only runs on OS X, which is the operating system for a Mac. Now you may have heard of some solutions that run on PCs or Windows, but those are third-party solutions not endorsed by or supported by Apple. So in the lessons that proceed, we're going to be using official Apple tools and materials and we're going to do it the way that it was meant to be done. And the Mac doesn't have to be expensive. For example, I'm still using the MacBook Pro that I bought in 2011 and it's still running all of the latest software fine without any performance issues. So if you're on a budget, I would recommend to buy a used MacBook or a used Mac. So now that you have your Mac, we can download that program which I mentioned where we'll be writing our code and creating our app in. And that program is called Xcode. It's available in the Mac App Store for free. The only requirement is that you need at least OS X 10.9.4 to run it. And that translates to OS X Mavericks, which is also free. It's a free upgrade if you're running an operating system that's lower than that. And as I mentioned, my 2011 MacBook is still running OS X Mavericks fine. So what does this Xcode program allow you to do? Well, if you think about an app for a second, at the very basic level, it consists of two things. The first thing being the user interface. That's what the user sees on the phone and what the user interacts with. And the second thing is all of the logic and response that happens uh, in response to the user interacting with the app. So Xcode allows you to create this user interface visually, in fact, if you'd like, uh, just by dragging and dropping elements onto the screen. And second of all, it allows you to write that logic and express that logic in terms of code. So you're able to code what happens when a user taps that button or what happens when the user swipes and you're able to use that code to perform calculations or go fetch data or respond to the user or update the view. Furthermore, Xcode also allows us to test our app. So in addition to creating the user interface and wiring up that logic with code, we can run the app in Xcode and Xcode has a great simulator which will appear on your screen to mimic the iPhone and it'll run your app inside of that so you can see what your app looks like and you can use and test your app without actually having a, an iPhone. So it's not even a requirement to have a device if you want to build an iPhone app. I mentioned that we use code to express the logic and what happens when the user interacts with your app's user interface. Well, that code follows a set of rules and follows a certain framework, just like a language. And that's why it's called a programming language. You may have heard that Apple released the second programming language for building iPhone apps called Swift. And this is what the lessons and the course is going to teach you how to use. The reason Swift is better for beginners to learn how to build apps with is because the syntax and the structure of the language is a lot more natural and intuitive. So it's a lot easier to read and to understand for beginners. In the past, when I taught the course with Objective-C, a lot of beginners struggled with the syntax and all of the different symbols and characters that would be used to write the code. Beginners would struggle with remembering what keywords to use and how to declare certain things. With Swift, the syntax is more of like plain English, so it feels less like you'll have to learn a separate language. So I'm really excited to show you guys how to use Swift. So that's all there really is to it. At the very core, you're going to be learning how to use Xcode to build your user interface, and you're going to learn the Swift programming language to respond to user events and user gestures and to express logic. 
So after you finish building your app in Xcode and testing it in the simulator, how are you going to get it on your device or how are you going to get it into the App Store? Well this part actually requires you to have an Apple developer membership and this is a yearly fee that Apple charges. It's $99 as of the recording. It has been actually ever since the inception of the program. It's been $99 a year and that allows you to publish as many apps as you want into the App Store and it allows you to install your app on a device. Unfortunately, there's no other way to put your app on an actual device unless you are a member of this program. So when you sign up for the Apple Developer Program, it gives you access into two things. One is called the Provisioning Portal, which is the place where you upload your certificates and create your profiles that dictate which devices your app can be installed on. Uh, and the second thing it gives you access to is iTunes Connect. And that's the place where you're going to create the catalog listing for your app. You're going to upload your screenshots. It's basically when you browse the App Store and you see all of those app listings with the description and the screenshots and the price and everything, you create those things in iTunes Connect. So you're going to create the app listing for your app in iTunes Connect. And then you're going to upload what you've created in Xcode. And then that's where you publish it into the store. In iTunes Connect, you can also check the stats for your app in terms of downloads and rankings. And if you have ads or if you have iAd in your app, you can check your earnings and you can get those types of reports. And if you have in-app purchases, iTunes Connect is where you would configure that sort of stuff as well. So there you have it. The only thing you really require is a Mac which will allow you to install Xcode, which is free, uh, to build your apps and to test your apps. And then if you want to deploy your apps on the phone, and deploy is just a fancy word for install. If you want to deploy your apps into the App Store or on an actual device, you can sign up for the Apple Developer Program, which gives you access to two websites to allow you to do that sort of stuff. So I hope that was useful to help you understand the ecosystem and all of the tools and materials that we'll be using. In the next lesson, we'll get started with dabbling in some Swift code.